Terminator Returns to the Future to fight tomorrow's evil cyborgs. Here's your look at the NECA Toys Terminator 2 Future War Metal Mash Terminator. The Future War cyborgs are tough, but Metal Mash Terminator can crush them with its extra powerful punch, and he can fire his phased plasma rifle to take down a pack of cyborg villains. Let's start this review by figuring out how tall Metal Mash Terminator is. I say Metal Mash, it actually reminds me of Monster Mash. Can you imagine a Monster Mash endoskeleton? I don't even know what it would look like. Probably like bright green or something. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked. I'm wandering off with other thoughts. The Ultra Measuretron tells us that the not Monster Mash, but Metal Mash Terminator stands at a rather impressive 7.4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 18.8 .8 centimeters tall. For some scale comparisons, we'll move over the endoskeleton and bring in the one that we had already looked at. This is the Power Arm T800. Get him to properly stand. The endoskeleton is actually a little bit taller. Let's see if I can get the legs a little bit more straight. Yes, the endoskeleton is a little bit taller than the T-800. The Metal Mash Terminator is also a lot skinnier, and obviously that's because it's going to have all the uh, flesh, all the living tissue over top of that. It is interesting, though, that it is a little bit taller than really the body that it's supposed to be in. Even though it's not of the same Terminator, it is supposed to be, I believe it should be, the exact same height to one another. Needless to say, let's have a look at the one accessory that comes included with the figure. Now this is the phased plasma rifle, somewhat identical to the one that we had gotten with the other Terminator, although as you can see, the coloring is uh, pitch black. In fact, actually, I think in the movie, there are more black plasma rifles than there are silver. But you can see that it does look like it's the identical weapon. Simply, this one has been cast in the black plastic solely. Unfortunately, the top part of the barrel came out of the packaging slightly warped. I may have to heat that, see if I can adjust that back into place. You can see, though, that this one, however, does get some extra red. Painted kind of in the little recessed areas as light up options on the plasma rifle. It does look good. It doesn't have as much, like I said, the coloring as this one here. But I do like the fact that it's got the... It's different that they're not just simply the exact same weapon. You know, we just painted the two same weapons the same colors and gave them to their designated figures. I like that they are different from one another. You can put it into one of the endoskeleton's hands. It's actually this hand right here. This other hand right here is just completely a relaxed hand, and it really isn't going to hold anything. But this hand right here, I did notice when I got it out, I had to pry the finger out slightly so it would fit around the trigger. It's a spindly figure. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But getting also to hold a weapon, for example, can be a little also trickier because it has to get its little spindly fingers, there we go, around the trigger. You can see it does hold it. Holds it well, but not great. It does flop around a lot because it's not really sitting against enough. The hands are so small, of course, that it doesn't grip the plasma rifle, say, as good as the T-800 did. But it's a good way to display the figure. And it does have enough, enough posability that you can move the figure around and you know you can display it with the, the plasma rifle in its hand. We will remove this and you have to be as equally careful taking that out of its hand. Certainly the last thing you would want to do is just break this one finger which as you can see is made up of very thin plastic. One thing that's rather neat about this Terminator is it does have light piping. See this circular disc of orange plastic? Well, that actually feeds its way from the back 
to the front to light up its eyes. And to show you how that works, I've got my little flashlight app on my phone and I'm just gonna tilt it right above in the hopes of not blinding you guys. There we go. You can see off, on, off, on. And it does a pretty good job depending on where the light is hitting it. My apologies as well if I accidentally have tipped that right in your eye. You can see how it lights on and off. This certainly is a lot cheaper method of producing the same effect than having to have batteries included. That would cost the figure a little bit more and probably sacrifice some of the posability. Even though this one really doesn't have a lot of posability, we'll talk about that right now. Yes, anybody that's owned one of these endoskeletons, this is just a simple repaint to the ones that we had gotten before, sort of know what to get or what to get when they get these in hand. You're not really getting the most poseable of figures, kind of relying more so on the sculpt to give you just an excellent rendition of the endoskeletons from the movie. Sort of falls into the same trap, unfortunately, that Jack Skellington also has. He's just a really spindly character, and it's really hard to translate that to plastic. NECA still by far is one of the best companies to have released an endoskeleton, initially releasing one as a cult classics release. Eventually, since then, of course, they've released a whole ton of them. So there are things on it that when you are moving it, you sort of feel the restrictions. There are limitations, of course, to all the things that it can do. It's got these neat little flaps on the back. Really don't know what purpose it serves, but uh, those just hinge out. Got to be a little careful of it because there's just a pin on the back that keeps everything in place. When you are bending stuff, it feels like there's going to be things that could potentially break. We'll talk a little bit about that all right now. Interesting thing about this particular figure as well is its branding that's featured on the front. This number tattoo, this little marker that they put on the front, is apparently to, pr to show that he's been programmed to protect the human resistance. No idea, I didn't know that. Um, on the front there, you've got 7550, and then you've got the little branding barcode there on the side. Again, didn't know that. It was listed on the back of the packaging. Face sculpt is good. Never had any real problems with the endoskeleton heads. Somehow, making it in a gold color with these little accompanying black accents, somehow seems to enrich this figure and give it depth that it never had before. Somehow, all the little details, silver seems just to work as well, but there's something exciting when I look at the gold treatment that this guy has been given. Unfortunately, again, like I said, there's a lot of limitations to what you can really do with the figure. It doesn't have any mouth posability, for example. When you are like moving the head back and forth, you can kind of see how it's attached by pistons. Well, when you are turning one, it's ultimately given stress to the other. So again, like you really can't do too, too much when it, when you talk about like the head, for example. Some stellar detail that NECA has incorporated into the little side of the temple. Again, I love the head sculpt. It's one of the scariest things that I've seen in sci-fi films. Still, to this day, the endoskeleton has just a really terrifying presence a mechanical skeleton essentially walking towards you somehow again looks a little bit better in the gold i have to admit the shoulders and arms are still kept to that same gold treatment as you can see the interior workings of all these pistons are now done and casted in black plastic primarily i'm guessing all of the figure was done in black plastic and then of course all the areas that have been gold likely have been painted in that fashion you got all these little pistons that are connecting, like, for example, its legs. His legs aren't as restricted as perhaps some of the other things that are on it. For example, when you are moving the legs, you can see kind of how the pistons move in and move out. And move in and move out. Limitations become a little bit more when you start wanting to move the leg forward and back. That's where, yeah, you can't do as much to it. And when you are moving it, you know it's going to get to that point. And I don't want to get to that point where something's going to break. Just right there it's going to break it's probably not going to make that noise but it's going to break nonetheless some great detailing there also on the legs you got these back pistons these ones aren't actually workable because the legs the feet rotate this way they don't hinge up and down so really a non-functional piston on the back there it literally has bald heels uh little tiny struts that support the figure 
This does cause a little bit of problems when it comes to displaying the figure, for example. If you have them just firmly planted flat on as flat as the feet could possibly get, the figure is okay. Really, the only part that's touching a flat surface is going to be the front feet here, which I might also have, might also add, has toe posability. I don't really know why you would add toe posability to something that already has very limited foot stability to start off with. One cheat and work around to that, so you can also use just a little clear stand. It does have pegs on both sides of its feet, and the support of the additional stand might also aid to keep the guy from falling over. Certainly the last thing you would want to do is walk into your room and find that the poor Terminator, the metal mash Terminator, has fallen on the floor and broken in the process. It does also have all these like little neat, like I said, flaps and things that move on it that practically you would have to kind of figure out, okay, why would it do that in real life? Again, in the, in the movie is one thing, as a figure is something else. It's got these notable pegs on the back, which I thought initially, I don't think was ever intended to hold a weapon. Uh, these clearly look like they're just holes for the screws in which the front plate and the back plate of the Terminator have been screwed together. And you kind of see where that seam is. There's a seam right there, and it works away up, not quite to the top, because it looks like it's only been sandwiching the torso plate to the back of the back plate here. You have this little spindly spinal column. And like I said, you've got all these pistons, but as you again move things on it, you feel like there are only, there's limitations to what you can really do with it. I've always found this entertaining that it has this little flap on the front. Never really understood what the flap was for. I guess it's so the torso could lean forward. This flap would simply move out of the way. NECA puts that into a figure, it really doesn't have the available means to bend forward and back because the spinal cord doesn't have any posability to it. It would be interesting if one day they swapped this out and put in a wire frame, something similar to what we got with the, the alien xenomorph tails. I know it would involve this now being a separate mold, this being a separate mold, which I guess is probably already the case anyways, but if they had put like a wire frame here, you could bend the torso up and down. I'm probably asking for a little too much there, but just something I was thinking about. Uh, so let's have a look at its posability. It does, like I said, have enough for what it can capably do. It still does have, like I said, limitations. So for example, like its head rotates to about there and equally to about there. Anything beyond that point, you're really running the risk of breaking a piston, and certainly don't want to be doing that. The arms hinge out quite actually comfortably. Don't feel as all like I'm, when I'm moving it, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm not gonna have that problem, at least from the arm standpoint. When you are moving the arm forward though, and back, there's this one tube that runs out from the top of the shoulder, and as you can see, connects to the interior of its torso. You just want to be careful of that. Again, you don't want that snapping or ripping in the process. The arms swivel back and forth, does move back and forth, or hinging back and forth on the elbow. There's a piston on the front, and a piston on the back, and a piston on the front, and a piston on the back. Uh, the forearm does not rotate. However, the hands do rotate all the way around. The upper torso has very mild, very, very mild swivel. Like I said, the legs, we've already discussed already, split out, slightly forward, slightly back. It does have a very generous bend in the knee. It looks like it's actually been pegged in place by a metal pin right there. So those move quite easily. But again, you really can't do, even if you bent the leg, you can't really get the figure to stand properly because it's now throwing off its stability, its feet, that is. The feet rotate back and forth, and it does also have toe articulation. There's a close-up look at its very scary feet. All in all, going in and picking up this figure, as I picked up all the other term new Terminator 2 figures, I sort of knew what I was expecting with the endoskeleton. Like I said, it's on par with sort of what you get from a Jack Skellington. Spindly by nature, you know that doesn't always translate well to an actual plastic action figure. In the same way that Diamond Select is doing a really good job on the Diamond Select uh, 
Nightmare Before Christmas figures for really what they have to work with with the type of the designs of the characters. Equally so, NECA's doing a good job when it comes to the, the Terminator figures. The endoskeleton here is still by far one of the best outings that we've gotten from a Terminator figure. And I do like the new branding of gold and black that makes up the Metal Mash Terminator here. I generally feel like most collectors picking up a Metal Mash endoskeleton here will likely know what they're getting. I don't feel any of them are going to be picking up this, opening it up, pulling out the figure, and then feeling disappointed that the figure can't deliver some of the more outrageous poses that maybe some of the other NECA figures have done in the past and continue to do. No, when you pick up a figure like this, you sort of know what you're expecting. This one is just sort of a carbon copy to what we've gotten before with endoskeletons, just given a brand new coat of paint. I have to say there's something about this paint that I rather quite like. The gold and the black seem to do a great job of making some of those exquisite and yet still fragile components on the endoskeleton pop in a way that they never did when they were silver. Again, it's just a recoat of paint, a fresh coat of paint on an existing mold. But once again, NECA delivers, I think, a pretty good variant to the otherwise silver endoskeletons that we're so used to having. I think this is a great addition and once again, a great nod to the existing original Kenner figures that we had back in the day. This is a recreation to one we had gotten before. And I think NECA, once again, has done a pretty bang up job on all of these. Some good news though, if you're interested in picking this one up or the Power Arm T800 that we had already had a look at. Some great news is that they're available now in local comic book stores. How about that? So you can pick them up. Price point on these, and I can only really give you the Canadian quotes, price point generally on these are about $24 to $28, which is the going rate for 7-inch figures nowadays. Uh, today we were having a look at the new NECA Toys Terminator 2 Future War. This was the Metal Mash Terminator with his phased plasma rifle. And looking quite good, I might add, in the gold. Now we are going to be still having a look at the T-1000. I think it's the white hot T-1000. I'm sure there's going to be jokes there. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Hit that little subscribe button down below so that you won't miss out on any future videos coming onto this channel. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.